we're on notice. We've had we've had eight years of notice, and we cannot let him just spew lies nonstop in any interview or any town hall meeting. And the moderator, Caitlin Collins, did have some of that information and did push back on it. The problem was in that format, it was a rally. It wasn't a town hall. It was full of Trump supporters. They laughed at every insult he threw out there. They supported every lie he told, and he fed off that as he does, turned to the audience as an ally against her. Within the first few minutes of his CNN town hall last night, Trump already was pushing that lie about the 2020 election. Why should Americans put you back in the White House? Because uh, we did fantastically. We got 12 million more votes than we had in, uh, as you know, in 2016. Uh, I actually say we did far better in that election. It was a rigged election, and it's a shame that we had to go through it. It's very bad for our country. All over the world, they looked at it. It was not a rigged election. It was not a stolen election. You and your supporters lost more than 60 court cases on the election. It's been nearly two and a half years. Can you publicly acknowledge that you did lose the 2020 election? Let me, let me just go on. If you look at True the Vote, they found millions of votes on camera, on government cameras, where uh, they were stuffing ballot boxes. Republican officials debunked those claims about fraudulent ballots. We want to give you a chance Who? tonight. Who? Republican officials Who? in Georgia and every single state. Uh, there is no your own election officials, Mr. Look, President. Uh, so we wanted to give you a chance. People were afraid to take on the issue, but we have a big problem in this country. We but have we, we wanted elections. To give you a chance to we have elections the that were horrible. A question to you is: Will you pardon the January six rioters who were convicted of federal offenses? Uh, I am inclined to uh, pardon many of them. I can't say for every single one, because a couple of them, probably, they got out of control. What they've done to these people, they've persecuted these people. And yeah, my, my answer is, I am most likely, if I get in, I will most likely, I would say it will be a large portion of them. So again, John, uh, Donald Trump said January 6th was a beautiful day, his words there. He said people were there with love in their hearts and then sort of conceded as an aside. Some of them got out of control, but said... I'm going to let the people out of jail yeah. who beat up cops. And we all saw it happen with our own eyes. Yeah. It was lie after lie after lie. Donald Trump has not changed. He was in, this is who he was in 2016. This is who he was in 2020. Nothing has changed. And he lied and he ran roughshod last night. And, and you started to talk about it a moment ago, Willie. The, the, the deep flaw of that, of that event last night was the crowd. It, you know, it was Republican voters. There were Trump supporters. People who worked on Trump's previous campaign were spotted as audience members last night. We know that emails were sent out to Trump Republican clubs to say, hey, come cheer on the former president of the United States at this town hall. And they did act like a rally. And it was which he called the moderator nasty, the crowd laughed and cheered. He called E. Jean Carroll, who we spoke to yesterday, called her a whack job. The crowd laughed and cheered. And that was the normalizing of this. That gave him a way out. That gave him allies there in the audience. And it, again, shows how he has just reshaped the Republican Party in his image, the complete dominance of the party. And he was given this uh, uh, opportunity last night to, to talk to them and show again that he's in charge. The counter, though, and Joe started to mention that earlier, I heard from senior Biden people last night basically said that was an hour long campaign ad for us. And, and the president's response afterwards was a tweet saying, look, if you want four more years of uh, you know, to avoid that, you know, vote for me. You don't want to go back to that. So there it, it is, again, this sort of dichotomy where everything Trump is doing right now seems to further his hold on Republicans, but probably hurts him in the general election. But of course, if you're in the final two. You've inherently got a shot. Joe, of course he has a shot. We've been saying that from the beginning. But you always talk about politics being a game of addition and not subtraction. Right. If you watched those 70 minutes last night, was there a single voter who said, you know what, I was thinking about voting for Joe Biden, or I'm an independent who's not in love with Joe Biden, but I like what I saw last night. Yeah. I'm going to go vote for Donald Trump. And that's something we have, we've been talking about for years, something that I've never understood. I will say, Donald Trump, if Donald Trump had dropped all of this garbage and talked about the economy, uh, 2018, yeah. 2019, going into 2020, had done his best to handle COVID, he would have been reelected. He just would have. You, you look at the map, you look at the numbers, he could have been reelected, but he kept... He kept, again, sort of boiling his support down. And, and it continues to happen. And, and uh, Jonathan just brings up a great point. You have a guy, first of all, still lying about 
the election being rigged. Uh, that's that's a minority view in America by by a large swath of people. You, in fact, that ABC poll that was supposed to be horrible for Joe Biden, a majority of Americans said Trump should be arrested, should be arrested for what he tried to do in rigging the the 2020 election. That's how much of a minority thing it is. Praising convicts, praising rioters who beat the hell out of cops and defecated in the People's House, the United States House of Representatives. He's praising these people. Yes, it's it's horrifying. It's horrifying, but it hurts him politically. You I, again, we can go down the list mocking and ridiculing a woman who was sexually abused by Donald Trump, sexually abused by Donald Trump, according to a jury of his peers. That woman mocked and ridiculed. And this Republican audience of Republican club members and, 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 and people, uh, th th these Trump loyalists, they're mocking and ridiculing a woman that a jury just found had been sexually abused. Sexually abused. That doesn't help Donald Trump. It crushes him in the Atlanta suburbs. That crushes him in the Philly suburbs. It crushes him in Wisconsin. It crushes him in, in the Detroit suburbs. All the places he needs to gain. Last night, the Trump campaign loved what they saw because they're stupid. They really are. They're just colossally stupid if they think that was good for them in a general election. And the Biden White House, thrilled that he once again showed his colors. There's breaking news that just broke across Financial Times. Jeffrey Katzenberg, this morning, news breaking, said he will do whatever it takes. He will provide whatever money is needed from his fortune to make sure Donald Trump is not elected president of the United States. Do you know how many people are waking up this morning saying that? Do you know how many people are waking up this morning saying, you know what, I need to get involved in 2024 and, and, and stop this fascist, stop this liar, stop this guy who elevates Vladimir Putin and trashes America and calls it the greatest threat to Western civilization. Now, there is, there is this morning a lightning bolt going through the American electorate, and it's reminding everybody the stakes of a second Donald Trump presidency. So last night, bad for democracy, bad for, for media, but even worse, Jackie, for Donald Trump, and you know